Please be seated. Grace and peace to each one of you this day, this Easter morning. It is great to see each one of you here today, and it is good that we gather on this most glorious of all Christian days. Um, wherever you are in your faith journey, I assume and know that um, Jesus, the risen Lord, is present in your life each and every day and greets you here this day as the risen Lord, Jesus the Christ. Um, Jesus is risen. He's risen indeed. Let us try that again. Jesus is risen. Amen. The gospel today is from the gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared for Jesus' body. They found the stone at the entry of the tomb rolled away, and when they went in, they did not find the body. They were perplexed about this. And as they were wondering, two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus is not here, but has risen. Remember how he has told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. And the women remembered Jesus' words, they returned from the tomb, and they told the eleven and all the rest their story. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them told this story to the apostles. But these words seemed to the apostles an idle tale, and they did not believe the women. Peter got up and ran to the tomb. He looked in. He saw the linen clothes lying by themselves, and he went home amazed at what had happened. The gospel for this day. If you would, please, um, join me in a prayer. Um, gracious Lord, this Easter day, grant us your spirit, the spirit of Easter, the spirit of resurrection, the spirit of truth. Be with us in our words and thoughts this Easter morning, that the resurrection may happen new for this world and new for us, that we might draw closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So the simple question on Easter morning is, is the resurrection visible to you? Can you bear witness to it? Um, can you see it? Can you believe in it? I believe that that is entirely possible, but it may be different than you think. To believe in the resurrection of Jesus takes a lot of faith and courage. And finally, when Jesus does come visible to us, it's always in an unexpected way. It always takes us by surprise. We are never prepared exactly for the way in which, the unique way in which Jesus comes visible to each one of us. In all of the accounts of Jesus' resurrection, and there are many, the one thing that is common in all of those stories is that the people who saw it didn't believe it, didn't anticipate it. It took them a while to understand who this was and what they were seeing. So we shouldn't be surprised that perhaps it's the same for us. But there was no one that shouted Alleluia when they looked in the empty tomb. There was no one, when they first saw the resurrected Jesus, said, praise God. It inspired questions. They were perplexed. They were confused. They were, even in some cases, afraid. So, too, it might be for us. But that's the truth, that in these resurrection stories, no one expected the resurrection, and no one, quite frankly, got it when they saw it. The women came to the tomb expecting to anoint Jesus' dead body. They had no expectation that Jesus was to be risen or the tomb would be empty. In fact, only when they are reminded by the two men in dazzling white clothes do they recall Jesus' promises. Excited, they run back to the disciples to share this story with Jesus' closest friends, with their friends, with their community, the ones that should have anticipated all of this. And those men meet this women's story with utter skepticism. 
In fact, Luke says that those who received the testimony of the women regarded their message as an idle tale. And that's a really weak translation, actually, of the Greek word, leros. That Greek word leros actually is the root word of our word delirious. They thought the women were crazy, literally unbelievable. If anyone were to come to church on an Easter Sunday not believing in God, not believing in the person of Jesus, I'm not sure that the story of the resurrection would be the starting point for their faith. I'm not sure that it ever really happens that way. I think it happens this way. I think that what Jesus would want from you and from me or for someone to hear the story for the very first time is simply to follow the way of Jesus, to try on a Jesus life so that you can see what it looks like from the inside out with your eyes, what it feels like in your body so that the evidence of faith might be present in your life. How it changes you, how a Jesus way of life changes the way you feel about almost everything about the sense of the sacred, a sense of love and what love truly is, of what joy can be, of how strong and enduring peace can actually be. Jesus called people and said to them, take a walk with me. Jesus didn't appear to most of the people in the world as a risen Jesus. Jesus appeared to most people as Jesus and said, come take a walk with me. Trust me just enough to follow me. And in the following, listen for a little while, watch these things that happen, and then do as I do. Say the words I say. Live the life I live. Become this new person as you follow me. If you begin to live a Jesus life, you will see the truth of Easter all around you. If you want to see the risen Jesus, live the life of Jesus. If you don't believe in miracles, see what happens to your life when you start to see God present in every moment. When you start to realize that God works through you, through your words, your actions, your commitments, your love. When you begin to start seeing your neighbor's need like Jesus would see your neighbor, when you begin to respond like Jesus would respond, when you believe that healing and reconciliation can happen in any broken family, in any broken relationship, even in your brokenness, and you begin to have a hope, that reconciliation can happen, you will start to see miracles in your life. If you don't believe that there is good in this world, follow the way of Jesus, the way of compassion, kindness, generosity, sacrifice, and see the good in this world multiply right in front of your eyes. It blossoms and it will return to you. If you don't believe in the power of love, if you've been dismissive when other people have talked about love, try on a Jesus life and love with reckless abandon. Love the people that the world says aren't worthy of love. Love the people who are hard to love. Love the people you don't even want to love and see the miracle that happens. If you don't believe in second chances, live a life of forgiveness and of peace. Give yourself a second chance and watch what blossoms and the flowers of relationship that happen. If you don't believe in healing, see what kind of magic happens when you dispense kindness and compassion with abandon, when you practice the simple act of showing up when people are hurting you will see miracles. If you don't think that God is at work in this world, start to believe that God works through the creativity, the imagination, and the passion of every person. 
See how God does amazing things every day in schools, in hospitals, in your neighborhood, in your work, in your home, in you. I think that it rarely ever happens that a person sees the resurrected Jesus and then has faith. But I think it happens every time that a person who has faith sees the resurrected Jesus. God is present. God is creating today. God is redeeming today. God heals today. God surprises today. God enjoys today. God loves today. God is in every heartbeat, every breath, every beauty, every act of grace. Every life is sacred. Every relationship is holy. Every moment holds the eternal. Every death holds new life. The resurrected Jesus is everywhere in our midst, in your midst. But we will not recognize him at first. People never do. But then in the face of a neighbor, in the voice of the stranger, in the tear of a friend, in the embrace of a lover, we will see him. We will see the resurrected Jesus in the darkness of the night of our lives. We will see him in the brightness of a new day. We will see him at the birth of a new child. We will see him at the gasp of a last breath. You will not see the resurrected Jesus in the words of a preacher. But you will see the resurrected Jesus if you trust him just enough to follow him. Have a blessed and glorious Easter this day and every day. The resurrected Jesus lives all around us, in us, and through us each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen.